G'day, it's Fugitive Australian journalist Shane Dowling from the website kangarooquarteroustralia.com. Now, National Anti-Corruption Commission, Commissioner Paul Brereton, either needs to resign or he needs to be sacked, given a government report was released last week showing he acted corruptly, trying to protect his mates in the Australian Defence Force from being charged with war crimes. Now, I published an article on the issue on Sunday the 19th of May 2024 titled Corrupt NAC Commissioner Paul Brereton Exposed Protecting His Mates in the ADF, Including Governor-General David Hurley from War Crimes. And the article starts off, National Anti-Corruption Commission, Commissioner Paul Brereton headed up the Brereton Inquiry into war crimes by Australian soldiers in Afghanistan, with Brereton finding that some responsibility for the murder of 39 Afghan prisoners and civilians could not fall on the most senior officers. The problem is that Commissioner Paul Brereton is also a Major General in Australia's Army Reserve, so the most senior officers are Brereton's mates, and it should be no surprise that Brereton found they were not liable for the murder of 39 Afghan prisoners and civilians. Brereton has been busted in his Brereton Inquiry report, trying to protect his senior officer mates in the Australian Defence Force, which totally undermines Paul Brereton's position as Commissioner of the National Anti-Corruption Commission. The government also set up the Afghanistan Inquiry Implementation Oversight Panel to oversee the implementation of the recommendations of the Brereton Inquiry report. A report by the Afghanistan Inquiry Implementation Oversight Panel was only released on Thursday, 16th of the 5th, 2024, and the ABC reported, Afghanistan panel suggests military top brass be held accountable for command failures over alleged war crimes. Serving in former defence chiefs, including Governor-General David Hurley, are facing fresh calls to take responsibility for command failures, which may have led to the alleged war crimes in Afghanistan under their watch. A report from an independent panel appointed to oversee the landmark Brereton Inquiry has finally been released warning that the lack of accountability from Australia's military top brass has generated anger and bitter resentment among troops and veterans. In 2020, a report prepared for the Inspector General of the Australian Defence Force by Justice Paul Brereton recommended 19 soldiers be investigated by police for the murder of 39 Afghan prisoners and civilians and the cruel treatment of two others. Now, the subsequent Afghanistan Inquiry Implementation Oversight Panel has rejected Justice Brereton's conclusion that senior commanders should not be held accountable for the murders of 39 Afghans. The panel did not agree with Brereton Inquiry's view that some accountability and responsibility could not fall on the most senior officers, and it suggested that issue should be the subject of further consideration. There is ongoing anger and bitter resentment amongst present and former members of the Special Forces, many of whom served with distinction in Afghanistan, that their senior officers have not publicly accepted some responsibility for policies and decisions that contributed to the misconduct, such as the overuse of special forces. Members of the oversight panel, led by former Inspector General of Intelligence and Security Vivian Tom, also compared the failure of senior defence leaders to accept accountability for war crimes to company bosses who face dismissal or even criminal charges for corporate collapses. In the private sector, major corporate failures result in both an organisational and individual responsibility to report handed to the government in November 2023 states. Personal knowledge or direct involvement of the senior officers in the causes or behaviour that led to the corporate failure are not required. So, why did Paul Brereton fail to look closely at the collective accountability and responsibility of Defence's most senior leaders? As the Afghan Inquiry Implementation Oversight Panel found, Brereton was protecting his mates as the only conclusion that a fair-minded lay observer might reasonably apprehend, and his job as NAC Commissioner is not tenable. Now, pictures are worth a thousand words. Governor-General David Hurley, Paul Brereton and Catherine Campbell, the three amigos, are in the picture on your screen now. The picture was published in 2016 on the Sydney University Regiment Facebook page. Now, the picture in, taken in 2008 depicts Vice Chief of the Defence Force and Honorary Colonel of Sydney University Regiment Lieutenant Colonel David Hurley, as he was then, who's now the Governor-General. In the middle is Brigadier Commander Paul Brereton, who's now Major General Paul Brereton, Commissioner of the National Anti-Corruption Commission. Brereton was, is obviously Army Reserve. And the third person there is uh, Colonel Catherine Campbell, now Brigadier Catherine Campbell. Her greatest claim to fame is that she perjured herself at the Robo-Debt Royal Commission. 
and she's ultimately being sacked. Now, in the article, I go on to talk about Paul Brereton's position as NAC commissioner being untenable, and because in a court of law, you do not have to prove real bias by a judge. You only have to show evidence that there is perceived bias, and a judge has to recuse themselves from hearing the matter. You know, on the Judicial Commission of New South Wales website, it says, the test for determining whether a judge should disqualify himself or herself by reason of apprehended bias is an objective double might test whether a fair-minded lay observer might reasonably apprehend that the judge might not bring an impartial and unprejudiced mind to the resolution of the question the judge is required to decide. Now, the problem is two fronts for Paul Brereton. Number one, he's been caught out red-handed trying to protect the senior officers of the Australian Defence Force. So the question is going to be, would he try and protect the senior public servants, which ultimately is the politicians, the ministers? Would he try and protect them, his bosses? Of course he would. One. And two, any uh, matters before him, before the National Anti-Corruption Commission, for example, Catherine Campbell, who was up to the neck in the robot at corruption, would he be impartial if he's uh, investigating her? Of course not. Of course he'd look after her, just the same as he tried to with the war crimes, tried to look after senior people with the Australian Defence Force. And I have no doubt he was appointed for that reason, because he would protect the politicians and they want to be protected. All he'll do is go after low-hanging fruit, the public servants. But even if there wasn't that perception of bias, he's been busted acting corruptly, trying to protect his mates in the Australian Defence Force. Oh, we can't investigate the senior officers. When he's a former judge of the New South Wales Supreme Court, he, of course he knows senior management got liability or potentially have liability and they have to be investigated. But he swept them straight under the carpet if he tried to. And for a commission of the National Anti-Corruption Commission, where their honesty and integrity need to be beyond reproach, not having a report busting them trying to protect their mates. He either needs to resign or he has to be sacked. Now, the report was only released last week, so the pressure is going to keep on building on Paul Brereton to resign without a doubt, or the government need to sack him. Otherwise, the whole reputation of the National Anti-Corruption Commission will be destroyed. It'll become a laughing joke. Well, it already is because they have only have secret hearings, except in exceptional circumstances. It was meant to be the other way around where they have public hearings, except in exceptional circumstances. But the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, had a secret meeting with Peter Dutton, did a dirty deal, and... You now they only have uh, public hearings in exceptional circumstances to protect the corrupt politicians. So Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Peter Dutton set up the National Anti-Corruption Commission with the sole purpose of making sure it failed in relation to investigating corrupt politicians. So what does that tell you about Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Peter Dutton? And I'll put a link to that article below this video on YouTube, and it's got a lot more information, a lot more links, a couple of videos that you can watch. So it's well worth clicking on the link and spending a little bit of time reading that article. So click on the link to the full uh, report by the Afghan Inquiry Implementation Oversight Panel. Fairly critical of uh, Brereton's findings in some regards, especially the fact that he found that his senior officer mates couldn't be, uh, in effect, held accountable for the war crimes. And like I said, uh, the report was only released last week, so pressure's going to keep on building, and I'll keep on following up. In Kangaroo Court of Australia's independent media, I publish a website and a YouTube channel, and I'm 100% crowdfunded from viewers like yourself, so please support my Patreon account. I currently have 420 supporters donating $2,348 a month. I need to almost double it to become financially viable, and you can donate any amount, $3, 5 10 15 20 30 40 $50 a month, whatever suits your budget. It all helps out in a big way. And please share this video on social media. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Other than that, thank you for your time, and have a good day.